So it's my really great pleasure to welcome uh, my brother in Christ, my uh, friend, my neighbor, <laughs> Cardinal Gérard Cyprien Lacroix, the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Quebec. Cardinal Lacroix, thank you for, for being here today. Bishop Bruce, it's a pleasure to respond to your invitation. You invited me, and I'm very glad that we do this together. Uh, it, it's really great, and it's got to be said, it's the kind of thing we would do from time to time together when we were uh, housemates, Kodak. That's right. That's when right. I spent those uh, 13 wonderful months as a, as a resident at the Archevêché de Québec, which is actually just down the street. So we're, of course, on Zoom, but we're maybe 200 meters from each other <laughs> across Vieux Québec. But but such are the, the circumstances that, uh, that we're living right now, and... Um, as you've said just this past week, and as I've said at other times, you know, even though it's a difficult time for, for both of our, our churches uh, to not be able to meet for in-person worship during these weeks of, um, of curfew and extra confinement, you know, we're, we're trying to do our part as members of this society and for the collective effort to, to fight COVID-19 and protect people, especially vulnerable people in our midst. So. No, it's good to we, see. we are definitely not on the uh, pause mode. We're very active in different ways. The pandemic has uh, is not giving us the opportunity to do everything we'd like, but we found other ways. That the Lord has given us a lot of creativity, and a lot of good people are bringing ideas and new new ways of doing things. We continue to proclaim the gospel and trying to live it in this world that needs the joy and the and the hope that the gospel brings. And, and so we're finding new ways. And this is one of the new ways we found, which is sharing the word together across a platform that we didn't even really use at all just, you know, 11 months ago. And now we're offering services of, of all sorts. Uh, so it's, it's great that you're able to, to participate in this way, Cardinal Lacroix. And I issued the invitation in particular for this week because this is no ordinary week in, in the life of the church. We're heading into something called the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity, which, as the name suggests, is a week that uh, Christians around the world have consecrated for almost, a, well, depending on when you, you count when it started, for over a century, uh, days specifically consecrated to really intentional prayer for the healing of the divisions of uh, the one Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church of Christ, of which we're all a part, but because of the, the wounds of history and um, what happens when a divine institution like the church is entrusted in the hands of fallen human beings, you know, we, we fall into division. But one of the great blessings of, of the last hundred years has been the, the great uh, efforts that have gone into trying to heal those divisions and, and reconcile those differences and seek forgiveness uh, for the wounds that we've inflicted on one another. Our two churches, Anglican and Catholic, have a particular history. Um, but I would dare say in, uh, in Quebec, we have a particular history of rapprochement and, and trying to model um, a good example of what Christian reconciliation looks like. A rapprochement, I didn't know you spoke Latin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm learning. I picked up a few words when I was living with you guys. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think this is great that we can do this. And and well, we're just the two of us today, but uh, uh, could have participated also. Many of our brother uh, ministers from Protestant and evangelical churches, uh, Pentecostal churches here in, in Quebec, we usually meet every year at least uh, before Christmas for a uh, uh, a two-course breakfast in my residence. You remember you've participated in that. We start with a, a traditional breakfast with uh, some good food and uh, coffee and donuts and different things. And uh, we, our second course is always the word of God. We share together between all the ministers of all the Christian churches in the greater area of Quebec. And that has brought us together and helped us uh, to grow. We're different. We've had our ups and downs and we've had times where we've looked to each other, not with the respect that the gospel invites us to, but we keep praying. And that's what we're going to do this week in a special way, that unity arrive. We need to rebuild and, uh, and, uh, and heal, heal the body of Christ. 
So I'm very happy that we're doing this. Well, and, and so am I. And it, it reminds me of that wonderful quote from, from St. John um, the, the, the 23rd, who uh, said in one of his discourses on the opening of the Second Vatican Council, you know, what, what unites us as, as Christians and followers of Christ uh, is much more than what divides us. And so that's so much of the effort is, is finding those things on which we find a unity that's already there and placing the emphasis on that and working with that and growing out of that rather than focusing on, on the divisions because the world is already divided enough. Um, the, church, uh, the church needs to be modeling um, healing and reconciliation. Yeah. So one of the neat things about the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity is that every year a different uh, a group or um, group of churches in a different part of the world is invited to prepare resources. And uh, the group this year was the, um, and I've got the, the little book here, where did I put it? The Community of Grand Champ, which is... Uh, the monks, right? What's that? Monks, right? Yeah, and, and sisters specifically. Okay. It's, it's, a, it's a group of, uh, a, an ecumenical group of sisters who, who came together in Switzerland uh, in the earlier part of the, the 20th century. Um, and their vocation um, very quickly became one of, of praying for and modeling Christian unity. So there's about 50 sisters that live in community and they come from all sorts of different parts of the world and all different Christian traditions. And their, their particular vocation is around um, praying for and, and helping reveal the, the church's unity in their own way. And every group that prepares the week of prayer for Christian unity is invited to pick a text um, to, uh, from the scriptures to, um, to reflect on. And the Grand Champ community this year um, picked a passage from the Gospel of John, which is my favorite gospel. Um, the first 17 chapters of, uh, first 17 verses of chapter 15 of John. Cardinal Lacroix, have you got that in front of you? Yes, I do. W would you mind reading that, uh, reading that for us? And maybe we could just kind of read the word together. Gladly. Reading from the gospel according to John. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he cuts away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes to make it bear even more. You are pruned already by means of the word that I have spoken to you. Make your home in me as I make mine in you. As a branch cannot hear, cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, Neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever remains in me, with me in him, bears fruit in plenty. For cut off from me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me is like a branch that has been thrown away. He withers. These branches are collected and thrown on the fire, and they are burnt. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask what you will, and you shall get it. It is to the glory of my Father that you should bear much fruit, and then you will be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so as I, I have loved you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my own joy may be in you and your joy be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A man can have no greater love than to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. I shall not call you servants anymore, because a servant does not know his master's business. I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have learned from my father. 
you did not choose me. No, I chose you. And I commissioned you to go out and to bear fruit, fruit that will last. And then the Father will give you anything you ask him in my name. What I command you is to love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful text, huh? It really is. It's so rich. Um, and it's kind of imagery you get in, in none of the other Gospels, which is part of the reason I'm, I'm, I'm fond of John. Um, and these are part of what um, are sometimes called the, the farewell discourses. So Jesus kind of um, parting words to his disciples before, um, before he heads into his his passion. Um, I mean, and I think the, the image from, from that passage that and, you know, strikes me each time is um, the image of Jesus as the vine and we, you know, his followers, his disciples as, as the branches. And I've, I've started paying more attention to vines in the last couple of years because I, uh, I spend more and more time on uh, Ile d'Orléans, which is just outside the city, a beautiful island. And among the many beautiful things on Ile d'Orléans uh, are vineyards. And yes. so I, I pass by and have passed through a, a couple of vineyards. And, you know, one of the things you notice when you look at vines is um, the, the branches of the vines are not just, you know, connected to the, to the main vine, which we can understand from this passage to be Christ, but they're connected to each other. There's this kind of um, beautiful lattice work of, of interconnectivity. And, and, I, and I don't know if that's why the sisters at Grandchamp picked this passage, but uh, that's always, for me, been a really helpful way of understanding the way in which we are connected, not only to Christ as followers of Jesus, but we're also by necessity connected to one another. And you know, we have to, to love one another uh, and abide in Christ, but also abide with one another. And so we, uh, we can't do this alone. Um, it's been said a couple of different times by some great thinkers that, you know, the, the, the challenges of this world are too great for a divided church. And we need, uh, we need each other as, as different expressions of the body of Christ mm. to, uh, to accomplish that. Mm. I particularly enjoy the fact that uh, Jesus, right off from the start, of this uh, 15th chapter reveals who he is. I am. Mm -hmm. For those who have read the Old Testament, we know that that's how God reveals himself. Huh? I am. He is. I am. I am the Savior. And in that first verse already, I am the true vine and my father is the vine grower. So there's the link. He's linked to the father very closely. And what does he want us to be? Linked to him. Uh, the image of the vine for me, uh, uh, what you said, and the closeness. The, this is all knitted together. We cannot, a vine cannot survive by itself just as a, it has to be intertwingled, close, you know. If not, the sap will not run, the life will not run between the branches and uh, and 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 the uh, le tronc. How do you say that in English? The, the, uh, the trunk. The, 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 the trunk. Main, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's so. It's the closeness of Jesus with us to make this possible. His life in us, and us in Him, as He would say. You know, mm -hmm. I am the branch. You are. I am the vine. You are the branches. We're going to do this together. This is possible, and uh, I, I think it's such a beautiful image. Well, and, you know, to keep with the, the vine image, you know, and, and with vineyards, you know, what the, the vines aren't just ends unto themselves. Their purpose is to bear fruit. And so this is what Jesus says, you know, we're called to do as well. And so, um, you know, the, 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 the call to the, the unity of the church and the whole ecumenical movement, it's not just a project that, you know, it's, you know, well, let's try and, you know, reconcile organizations and, and get along. It's, it's unity in Christ so that we might bear the, the fruits of the spirit, the fruits of the kingdom and give tangible expression 
to the kingdom of heaven on earth here and now and to, and to bear that fruit in abundance. And so mm-hmm. it's, uh, it has very much a, an end in mind and an end for the, the good of the world that, that Jesus loves. Another thing I thought about, about the vine, uh, people who work in vineyards tell me that it's a lot of work. Mm. It's really a lot of work. A vine is not a, uh, a decorative tree. You only work with a vine if it produces the grapes, it produces fruit. If not, I mean, we have a lot of decorative trees. You know, we'll have cedar. Uh, we'll have rows of cedars to make a nice hedge. We'll have uh, other trees, ornamental trees. Uh, we have uh, birches. We have many ornamental things that we love. You'll never see a vine as an ornamental tree. You want it if it bears fruit. And that's how we are. The church exists to bear fruit. We're there to bear fruit. We're not ornaments in this. We're not there just for our beauty, for ourselves. We need fruit. And the fruit of a, of a vine is the grape, and the fruit of a Christian is love, it's joy, it's life. It's, it's giving of oneself. And I think that's a beautiful image, too. And uh, we have not always uh, given to the world the fruits that we are called to give, you know? And uh, for me, the... Uh, what, what I see a lot in this text when I read it and reread it and, and prayed with it uh, as we prepared for this sharing today, it came to me as very clear, the invitation of the Lord, that without him, you know, we're nothing. We cannot bear fruit without him. We need to be really, uh, uh, how would we say that in, in English, uh, grafted on the, on the vine. They do that, you know, they take, and, they, they, and then they, they put it together so it will be stronger. And so the life of one will come in together and they share the sap. That's what we need. It's a condition for growth to be rooted in Christ, to receive the sap from the Lord, his grace, his love, to receive his life. And that's, that's how close our God is. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't do this in a virtual way. He gives it to us for real when he gives us his life in baptism and, and through the sacraments and through his word and through others. So I think that the best thing we can do, you and me and all the other Christians that we share life with right now is to uh, look how we can be more rooted in Christ, grafted on him and, and, and be united to him in the father and the spirit and that's how we're going to bear fruit. And that's how we're going to rebuild unity. It's possible if we're in Christ. Well, and there, there's another image that Jesus uh, uses here. I mean, there's, there's that idea of grafting and, and growth uh, and bearing fruit. Um, but he also talks about um, pruning. So, you know, uh, pruning for growth. And so when you were talking about, you know, some of the ways in which the church maybe hasn't um, uh, done her best at uh, bearing fruit and following that to which we've been called. Um, I mean, I sometimes interpret that as a, as an invitation from Jesus that, you know, that the church needs to be in continual reflection and, um, and discernment about whether we are bearing fruit and whether pruning, which is a, a cutting away of things that aren't as, uh, as fruit bearing, maybe need to be set aside or, um, or treated in a different way. And I, I know that's certainly in our church a season that if we're not already in, we're heading into, especially in, in the midst of, of the pandemic, you know, are there things that we need to change about um, the way we've been doing things um, so that we can continue to bear fruit because the ways we've been doing things in the past maybe aren't as suited to the, the current conditions, the current climate, if you will. And so there's, I, I don't read that as a warning from Jesus. I see that as an invitation to, 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 to know that the, even the church has to, um, in, in different ways, adapt to its context, as our churches always have. I mean, we're not the same churches that we were when, you know, Bishop Laval first arrived and Bishop Mountain arrived a little while afterward. Uh, the, the fundamentals and the, the, the core, the, the, the root that is Christ is the same, but the manner in which that's been expressed over time has adapted to the, to the conditions. And, and pruning is, is part of life. I mean, uh, those who take care of, of vineyards uh, know that it's a very 
a very important part of taking care of a vine is pruning it. If not, you're not going to get much fruit or you're going to get little fruits or no fruit. Because if you don't prune what is not necessary, all the, the sap and the, and the, 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 the minerals and the, all the energy that's needed to, 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 to grow will go in all these unnecessary things. And well, we've got some of those in our lives. And in our religious vocabulary, we would call this, uh, uh, we'd call this uh, conversion. We'd call this purification. Uh, in the gospel, uh, Jesus talks about pruning. But it's, it's the same thing. Some things need to be cut off because they're not producing life. They're not producing love. They're not pr producing unity. Well, we, we don't need that, you know. Uh, but let's not cut the trunk. No, no. Let's, let's be united to the trunk. But uh, yeah. Yeah, what a beautiful text. Uh, this week will be a special week to, to reflect on this text and meditate it more than once to, to see and uh, I'm sure you have that also in, in, in uh, your communities and in, in the Anglican Church. Uh, you have groups that share the gospel together. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have started this for, for a long time, but this autumn with the pandemic and everything, we've increased. We call them maisonnées, mm -hmm. like little homes where we share. We're doing it virtually right now, like you and me are doing it, but eight or ten people. I participated in one of those. Every week we have a, uh, we usually share the gospel of the, the next Sunday, mm -hmm. and it's wonderful to see how the Word of God enlightens us, and as we share it, we grow in fraternity and unity, and the Holy Spirit helps us to, to, to welcome the Word of God in our hearts, and it's bearing fruit, you know, because we're made to be together. We're in the same vine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had uh, something of the same experience. Uh, one of the, the traditions of what you're describing is the Maisonnée, um, in the Anglican Church is called gospel-based discipleship, and it's exactly the same idea. It's gathering people, uh, doesn't need to be a lot, two or three, as Jesus himself says, right. and we uh, reflect on the gospel of the day. It's read um, three times. Yeah, that's what we do too. Uh, a series of very simple questions, you know, is there a word or image or phrase that stands out for you? What do you hear um, the gospel or Jesus uh, saying to you? And what do you hear the gospel or Jesus calling you to do? And then, it, you know, and there's a prayer before and after that. And, and it's as simple as that. And, and it doesn't need to be more complicated than that. And so I think that's one of the gifts. I mean, I'm always trying to find the signs of light and resurrection and hope in the midst of the darkness of the pandemic. And I think for a lot of people, um, it's been you know, becoming reacquainted or maybe acquainted for the first time in, in, in the word of God, in, in the scriptures and engaging with God's word in, in a way that perhaps they hadn't before on a Sunday morning uh, at church and, and reflecting on the gospel. And um, like, you don't need to have a, a degree in biblical theology. Uh, you just need to be able to, to hear the words of the gospel and, and respond and, and how that's speaking to you and working in you. And that's one of the great gifts we share. I mean, you know, different Christian traditions, you know, have, have different uh, rituals and doctrinal kind of emphases and ways of administering themselves, but we all share the same, you know, sacred scriptures. And that's something that we can gather around. And I'm really grateful that you've taken the, the time today, Carl de Lacroix, to, to do that uh, Thanks with for me the and with your friends uh, in the Anglican Diocese of Quebec and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. God bless and have a wonderful week of prayer for unity. And may we grow, us as pastors, and help our people grow in this unity so we could give this witnessing to the world that is living so many challenges at this present time. Uh, we need to be pastors and, and communities that build. There's enough destruction out there. Let's not complicate things any worse. Let's make them better. And being rooted in Christ and in the word of God will help us do that. Amen. Amen.